Hi, welcome back. Today, we dive into the core elements that bring dynamic effects to life in visual scripting, variables, and data. Let's refresh our memories a bit. Remember, in our first video, we introduced the concept of a node as a kind of function box that passes around commands and data. Well, today, we're going to expand on that by diving deeper into what data and variables really are. What is a variable? You can think of a variable as an incredible, amazing container, just like you might use a physical box to store a watering can, a sun, and a package. In visual scripting, a variable acts just like this box. You can fill it up with different types of information, such as a number, a phrase, or even a list of data. In the effects project, you can bring in objects from the hierarchy panel as variables by simply dragging them into the visual scripting editor. You can also add properties from the inspector panel as a variable and also asset images, textures, and materials from the assets panel into the visual scripting editor as a variable. These elements fundamentally hold specific data that becomes instrumental to your scripting logic. For example, when dragging an object into the visual scripting editor and transferring them into a node, it allows you to modify its attributes. We have a node called get component by type, which will essentially get the component attached to this object. In this case, it's transform and mesh renderer for you to use. Also, you can dictate its behaviors. For example, you can use set visibility node to turn it on and off as you want. Let's give it a try. We will use screen tab, our old friend, to control the visibility this time. We want their hat invisible after the screen tab, so I will simply test it in the preview panel. Oh, look at that, it disappeared. Controlling the component and its property of an object as a variable is slightly different than the object itself. After selecting the object in the hierarchy panel, in this case, let's select left glass. And when you head over to the inspector panel, find the property you want to modify by clicking the gray dot in front of the property name. Let's say we want to change the position, but you see there's two options that pop up here. Getting position and set position. What's the difference here? Getting a variable is like peeking inside the box to see what's there, but without changing anything. So a small tip for this is you can actually use the node peak to have a look at what's inside. And if you change the position to say 10, 0, 0, we'll see the value in the peak node also change. Straightforward, right? Setting a variable, on the other hand, is like placing a new item into our variable box, changing its content, actually. So let's say we want the position of our object to get changed after our screen tap. We're using the node screen tap here. Link it over to the enter port of the set position. And we can simply just modify the value here to let's say five. And Y axis is five as well. So let's give it a try. We click on the preview panel and see the object actually moved over there. Just remember, get is for peeking inside and set is for changing its value. Adding a customized variable. In addition to those preset variables, you can also add new variables to store and retrieve the data you need. Start by navigating to the visual scripting editor and click on 
the My Items button in the toolbar. From there, you'll want to click the Add button next to Variables in the My Items sidebar. You're now ready to customize your variable. Click on your newly created variable to view and adjust its details in the detail sidebar. Here, you can personalize settings such as the variable's name, its type, and even its default value. This level of customization allows you to truly make your variables your own. But we are not done yet. To use your variable in the visual scripting editor, you need to click the create node circle button next to your variable's name. And here, we need to decide whether we want to get or set the variable. There you have it. You are equipped to add and customize variables to suit your specific needs in the visual scripting editor. Configure a variable's data types. Okay, let's dive in a bit here. To configure a variable, you need to determine the data type. Go to the detailed sidebar and find the type slot and click on the drop down button. It will show you a list of data type options, which essentially represent the kind of information your variable can store. And choosing the correct data type is essential. For instance, a number data type only stores numeric values, while a color data type is exclusively for color values. Making sure you match your data with the right data type is crucial to avoid errors and ensure your script functions correctly. Let's break down some common data types you will use in visual scripting. Number can be an integer or a float number with a decimal. Perfect for counting or indexing. Boolean is a data type that has only two possible values, true or false, or much like a checkbox status, check or unchecked. String is used for storing sequences of characters such as sentences or words. Colors manage color values typically defined with RGB or hex. Vector2, Vector3, and Vector4. These represent positions or dimensions in 2D, 3D, and pseudo 4D spaces, respectively. Rect represents the dimensions of a rectangle in their 2D space, defined by X, Y, the width and the height. Great for layout and interface design. Texture 2D pertains to a 2D texture, often used for texture assets. You can set different assets to it as you want. The last one, scene object. You'll find that storing and retrieving scene objects through variables is a very handy trick in game effect development. We will explain more later. By understanding and correctly utilizing these different data types, you can create more structured and effective scripts. Configure a variable's container type. When creating a variable, you also need to choose a type of container for your data. Go to the detail sidebar and you will see from the drop down menu that there are two options single or array. A single container means it holds one data item. It could be data of any type, number, or color. Essentially, if you want to store a new item, you have to replace the current one because it only has space for one. An array container is a bit more complex because it can store multiple data items in the same variable. For instance, let's say we want to have a box of colors. By clicking on the add button, under default value, you can set up the array, the list of objects. Let's say we want to set the first item as red, the second item as green, and the third item as blue. These items are stored in an organized manner so you can access them by their position using get item from array node. You can simply just input this variable 
into this get item from array. And you can input the index of the item you'd like to retrieve. You may notice that zero is actually the starting point. It may seem counterintuitive, but this is how the computer world works. Zero is the starting point and so on. Now we can have a peek. Adding the peak node, and you may notice that it shows up as a peak node for vector four, which is not what we want. We want to peek into the color because color is the variable's data type. So we'll need to click on the drop down menu of the peak node. Now we will see that the first item is red, exactly like what we stored there. An array is useful since it's an efficiently managed list or collection. You can store game objects, scores, and series of values and access them while using their order index. Demo. Okay, let's examine how to use variables in real cases. Suppose we want to create an image cycle. By tapping on the screen, the user can see different images popping up in order. First, we need to select the image object from the hierarchy panel. Then, let's go to the inspector panel, and we will use the add interaction shortcut. Scroll down, and you will find a subgraph called cycle image textures on tap. Click on it, and it will open a subgraph that does exactly what we want. Now, we need to input all of our textures into this slot, image textures we'll need a variable that can store all the textures we want to set. Head over to My Items panel in the toolbar of the Visual Scripting Editor and click on the Add button near the Variables section. And we will name our variable Textures. Then go to the Details sidebar. Since this is an image, we need to make sure that the variable box can hold images. In this case, we will select Texture 2D. We want to put three images into it, so it can't be a single container. It has to be an array. After setting up an array, click on the Add button three times to create three boxes in this variable. By clicking on the default texture slot, you can swap it to the texture you prepare. And I'll set it up like this. After setting everything up, we need to bring the variable into the visual scripting editor. Since we don't want to change the value of the variable, we just want to peek into the variable value. So we're going to use get variable here. After get variable, link it over to these image textures. Now let's test it. Click on the preview button and you will see that the image changed. Because you set the order as looped, it will show in the exact order you set up this array. But if you change it to, let's say, random, it will just display a random image without following the index you set up in the array. You can also set it up as shuffle. Just give it a try. Pro tips. Use templates to learn variables. Variables are essential for creating complex effects and visual scripting. You can learn their usage by studying our templates. How do you learn from a template? Pick one template that resonates with your interests, like the photo slideshow. Just remember, not all templates will use variables, but some of them will, like multiple times. And when you open the template, you can simply head over to the Visual Scripting Editor, click on the My Items sidebar, and it will show you what variables get used there. And click on the variable in the list, and it will navigate you directly to the place where the variable gets used. And you can also have a look at the variable type, container type, and default value. And if you notice, the variable is actually highlighted for you. So you can zoom in and out in order to understand how this particular variable gets used. And something very useful is to change the variable to observe the effect and apply your new knowledge to your projects. Another pro tip 
is you can actually search the variable by its name. So let's search upload count. And you will see that there is an up and down button where you can navigate between all the different complex graphs in order to see exactly how this variable gets used. And as you absorb in these functionalities and how they get used, you can get better at using them in your own projects. Happy exploration. Quiz time. Now, before we end, question. Which of the following can be added as a variable in a visual scripting project? A, only numbers and strings. B, only objects from the asset panel. C, assets from the asset panel, objects from the hierarchy panel, and properties from the inspector panel. Or D, only colors and textures. With this understanding, you're ready to create more complex and logical flows in your visual scripting projects. We'll explore this further in our next module.